Good afternoon. My name is Kyle Alexis Smith and I am a subject librarian at Cal Poly Pomona. I'm going to present building a Afrofuturist and social justice comics and graphic novels collection, a case study at Cal Poly Pomona. So you're probably asking what exactly is Afrofuturism? It's a term that was coined in the 1990s by culture critic Mark Derry and conversational scholar Alondo Nelson. Afrofuturism is a cultural aesthetic of philosophy that centers people of color and critiques past and present concerns while placing a spotlight on futures with African diasporic experiences at the intersection of technology. In this presentation, I'll discuss how I created a smaller collection within a larger comics and graphic novels collection that centered black futures, as well as how I created a location in the library for a comics and graphic novels collection. And finally, I'll do this through three ways, what was, what is, and what will be. First, a little bit about Cal Poly Pomona. It's one of 23 campuses in the California State University system and is one of two polytechnic universities. The student body consists of about 25,000 undergraduates and graduate students, and this campus is incredibly diverse. We are a Hispanic serving institution and 83% of the student body identifies as being from one or more traditionally underrepresented groups. So before the collection was started, there was no one location for comics and graphic novels in the library, and no real rhyme or reason for collecting them. They were scattered all over the library, and there were a large amount of them lived in the juvenile section. Because they were scattered all over the library, students couldn't browse to find them. A student had to know a particular title to find a comic or graphic novel and or be a savvy student that knew how to search subject headers in the catalog. A number of faculty members discussed using comics and graphic novels in their classroom and asked for books to be added to the collection. At the time, I didn't have funding to do this, so I dragged down the items in distant investigation into our catalog to one, see if we had these items already, and to also to look at the current comics and graphic novels that we do have. To my surprise, I actually could not find very many that centered people of color or even were by people of color. So I wanted to support classroom curriculum, but I also wanted to build a more inclusive and visible collection for the Cal Poly Pomona community to enjoy and use. Cal Poly Pomona is not an incredibly wealthy institution, so I didn't have unlimited funds to order anything that I wanted or was asked for. The collection I started is a smaller collection in the larger comics and graphic novels collection, and hopefully it can grow to be a more inclusive collection over time. To develop the Afrofuturist and Social Justice collection, I kept the scope and decision making within a few criteria. Titles that centered black features and social justice, titles that supported the curriculum, and this is important because the scope of the endowed funds was for art and for African American studies. And the current collection was not as inclusive and didn't include a lot of art related or African American studies comics and graphic novels. I focused on bound copies, which were preferred, and I did not collect ebook comics or graphic novels. I mainly focused on print. So, how did I find titles for the collection? I started with suggestions from faculty and did research into titles that fell under social justice and Afrofuturism. I usually ordered books through Obi, our preferred vendors as well, but newer books we had to get through in Amazon or from individual comic artists on their website. There's more information about collecting Afrofuturist comics and graphic novels in a book chapter that I co-authored in the book Comics and Critical Librarianship for Academic Libraries. The book chapter is called Blacks of the Future, A Librarian's Guide to Building an Afrofuturist Collection and Exhibit. So here are a few titles that I added to the collection. First we have Gordon Park's How the Photographer Captured Black and White America on the Left, and Zorna Hurston's graphic novel. Of course there is Black Panther in the collection now. Uh, we also included the title um, by Roxy and Gay. And of course, items from Luke Cage, of the entire collection of Luke Cage, and the entire collection of Storm. Here are a few of the social justice comics, 
On the left, we have Harriet Tubman. On the right, we have Martin Luther King. And we have Black. Preservation has always been something on my mind with this entire collection. After a discussion with the Special Collections Librarian, I learned that the comics could not live in Special Collections because they were out of scope. So I interviewed a number of librarians that circulated their comics collection for best practices. I worked with a staff member that does preservation in the library and we ordered Mylar bags and asked a few boards for the comics. We added the call numbers to cover the Mylar bag and on the comics themselves, keeping in mind we didn't want to cover up the artwork. When it came time to making decisions about circulation, I again was thinking about preservation because at the moment we don't have funding to replace the issues. After much discussion with colleagues, I decided to circulate the collection for 28 days and leave them out of the, our consortium, CSU Plus. The consortium is a sharing system between all 23 CSU campuses. Hopefully in the future we can secure funding to make this available to the CSU Plus consortium. And in order to grow the collection, I plan to apply for grants and it's available using endowed funds. Please pause here to let Pam elaborate on the cataloging details. Okay, I'm back. So this picture here is where the comics and graphic novels collection will live. The new purchases will be added to this area as well as all of the comics and graphic novels that are going to be pulled from the stack. The top of the shelves will be used as they are now for advertising covers of the comics and graphic novels for comics themselves, new purchases as well as interesting titles. And the sign at the top there that says new books is going to be changed to comics and graphic novels to identify the collection. So next steps. Of course, we're going to need new signage, which is in the process of being ordered and installed. Uh, announcing, we're going to roll out an announcement to the university. That'll include website signage, as well as digital signage, and possibly even bookmarks. And moving, shifting the collection that is currently there, and then adding the collection from the stacks, as well as the new items to the shelves. And finally, I want to assess the new section and make sure that this was a good move. So using statistics is going to be important. This will be a comparison between the statistics of when they were put on the shelf, and also I'm gonna use statistics from a year from now to predict or support my prediction of the increase in usage with the visibility of the new location as well as the actual visibility of the items themselves. And here is a sneak peek of the website banner to announce the collection to the university that should go out within the next couple months. And finally, I want to thank you so much for your patience in listening to my video. And I apologize for not being able to be there, but I definitely appreciate any feedback and questions. Please direct any of that to my colleague who is here or to my email address, which is on the screen. Thank you so much.